So basically, I am Pedro Zavert from the Department of Evolution and Anthropology, University of Vienna, and I'm going to talk about the social genomics of the LDK expansion. The idea is to briefly discuss what I have been doing during the last month. This is part of an unpublished work that will be probably, I mean, published during the next month because we have just, I mean, we'll submit next week to, to the journal, basically. So what I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about the LDK. For the ones that don't know that, it's one of the major cultures of like the early Neolithic in the sixth millennia, and basically they're responsible for the expansion of agriculture through most of present day Central and Western Europe. There are some differences that we call like the Eastern LBK and the Western, and our idea was to see if that correlates to something genetic. As I have said, it's a continental phenomenon that has differential uh, characteristics in the, in the East and in the West. I mean, it's sedentary groups that are organized in longhouses, which we intuit that there were like big sample, big, big groups of people, and they show regional differences I have said before. As the title, as the title says, this is about social genomics. And what social genomics is? Basically, it's using genomics, using ancient DNA to understand things about like social structures of past societies. For doing that, there are two things that are important. First is to, it's to do whole cemetery analysis. That means that analyze all the individuals of cemeteries to gain like insights about culture. And the second one is get like big sample sizes, because if not, we don't get um like clear ideas. Which were our research questions? Basically, we wanted to see, as I have said, that there are two archaeological cultures. Are these two different people? Can we can we track the expansion of these people through genomics? Can we see if the people are unequal or do they have different mating patterns? There is a specific question about the sleds I will talk later. And apart from that, why are we sequencing that many genomics genomes? So basically, what we did, we sequenced 34, we studied 34 different sites, I mean, up to 240 genomes. I mean, we screened much more than that, but at the end, we ended up with more than 200 genomes. And we integrate the data of these genomes with like very deep archaeological um, data. So now I will go through the different questions I mentioned before. The first is two peoples, two cultures. Basically, yes, we have basically evidence that the, uh, the Eastern LDK and the Western LDK are different people. The Eastern having much more hunter-gatherer mix than the Western ones, probably responding to different patterns of admixture with local hunter-gatherer populations. This we also see it because basically in the Y chromosome, which is basically the DNA that is transmitted only through um, paternal lineage, there is a much more differentiation in the Eastern ones than in the Western, meaning that the Eastern were probably an isolated population in comparison to the rest of the LDK populations. Can we track the expansion of the LDK through genomics? Of course we can. Basically, we have compared the amount of DNA that the different sites share one another. I mean, and then we have basically plotted that into these uh, plots, which basically indicates the correlation between the amount of DNA that it shared between two sites and the distance between these sites. Basically, we evidence that in the East, as closer the sites are, more DNA they share, while in the West, we don't see that. This is basically because in the East, populations were probably very endogamic, while in the West, not that much. We also correlate this information, as I said before, with this uh, plot here that we see that the people in the East, the ALPCs, basically are much more, uh, they have much more inbreeding than the people in the West. So again, we are getting much more clues than there is two differential populations, one always in the East, being much more hunter-gatherer, much more inbreed, and with much more connections regionally, but not across Europe. Then uh, can we use ancient DNA for understanding like social patterns and, and mating patterns? Of course we can. And this is basically what makes uh, DNA exciting for most of archaeologists, because basically we have been able to, um, to find out that the LDK are probably a patrilineal um, society because they share mostly like, I mean, if we compare the amount of relatives per site taking, I mean, separating males and females, we see that males have much more relatives in cemeteries than females, indicating that probably the societies were patrilocal and were women the ones that were moving. What we have also, what we can also do, and this we have done here, is that I co correlate these families that we have observed with actual archaeological record. And what we have found, which is in this or one of the families from Folgar Ferenczi Hack, one of the Eastern LDK sites, which is interesting, we have found that uh, the material, the, the archaeological material in the graves correlates with uh, with the DNA, meaning that the individuals that have the most um, differentiated archaeological material in the graves, the grave goods, those are the ones that correlate with a higher amount of hunter-gatherer mixture. So probably indicating that there was also an stratific, um, there was a relationship with the cultural grave goods and the, and the hunter-gatherer DNA. When we go for the fourth question that we try to answer, it's are these societies equal? We have seen that these societies are patrilinear, but are these societies equal? So how, how can we know that? We can know basically reconstructing the families, the pedigrees, and then comparing that with grave goods and with um, dietary isotopes, for example, or like mobility isotopes. What we have found is that we have not found any kind of association between family and dietary isotopes, meaning that we cannot say that LDK societies were unequal. 
probably they were quite equal because all the differences that we have seen between carbon and nitrogen, they basically are within families, as you see here, that not between families. So families were have very different values of carbon and nitrogen within the family, but they are not statistically significant between the families, indicating that they, all the variability is it's within the family. Then we have the situation of Schletz. For the ones that you don't know, Schletz is located in, in Niederösterreich, in the north of Vienna, and basically it's a massacre that happened at the end of the LBK, together with Talheim and Haraksim and other, other massacres at the end of the LBK, and where we have more than 200 individuals that were um, basically killed at the same moment. What we have found is that we have found that there are no relatives, there are no, that all the children that is there have no relatives, and also like doing like a demographic of prediction of those, the population must be much more bigger than that. So that leaves the situation open. And finally, I just wanted to say, why we do so many genomes? Basically to gain significance. So when, when we ask ourselves, which is the point of doing 300 genomes and not doing it 100? So basically it's that, that with, with 300 genomes as we have done here, 200 with the ones that are already published, we can detect signals of selection in the genome during this very important period of time that it's the Neolithic that we could not do it with 10 genomes. So when, when the question is why we do so many genomes, it's to know that. And what, what, what have we learned from here? Basically, what we have learned from here is that something that was already known that during the Neolithic, there was the selection of many different alleles. What we have been able to prove here is that most of these selection processes are happening within the part of the genome that comes from the, from the Anatolian, um, 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 from the Anatolian um, individuals and not from the part that basically relates from the hunter gatherers that would be correlated that the all that all that mix that mix dna that comes from the hunter gatherers would be like negatively selected so which are the take-home messages from this work the first is that the neolithic society that expanded fast in europe as the lbk were quite genetically uh homogeneous except for the eastern ones that we don't see any kind of signs of social inequality in these societies but we see patriarchality that the lpcs in the carpathian basin this eastern lbk are clearly different from the rest for many things and that the fact that we have not found uh, relatives in the and a population much bigger than the one that was thought leaves many open questions about which is the symbolism of these LBK um, um, massacres at the end of the LBK phenomenon. That's basically what it is.